Hi guys, welcome back. Film Nerd Corey again. And today I'm going to be giving you a look into the vintage room. Now this is the smallest room in the house. It's a, about a 10 by 10 or 10 by 11, something like that. But I've uh, packed a lot of stuff in here having to do with my hobbies and interests. All things that are retro or older than the new millennium has to offer. So, let me give you a quick look around it. So you can see uh, what I got going on here. And I've got plenty more, got plenty more videos to make about it because there's just so many little little details to fill in. But anyway, let's start over here with the uh, the audio section. And as you can see, I've got this very nice Pioneer SX535. Those beautiful blue readouts. I love it. This is my first vintage uh, receiver. And it works perfectly. It's really beautiful. Very clean. I gave it a good um, cleaning when I first got it. Um, which, geez, might actually be going on a year. I can't remember. It's been a while. But, uh, yeah, very happy with it now. Been using it a lot. And up here we have the Yamaha YPB2. Which is another just wonderful vintage piece from the mid 70s. And I got my little uh, custom mat here. But this is what it looks like without it. And these two go beautifully together. They look beautiful, they sound beautiful. I love them. And I, I did tell you about this in a in a couple videos ago, but uh, I also have a grotto needle on that, and I have used the uh, the pioneers built in phono stage, which sounds fine, but uh, sometimes I also use the aftermarket phono stage, which is good for um, when I want to record my vinyls into into flack. And this isn't hooked up to anything, the, the bottom switcher, but um, I can use that to swap between either, you know, multiple speakers or I've actually used it for multiple receivers. Just as long as you're careful never to have two buttons pushed at once if you're using two receivers, because that could be very bad. But it's a nice little box to go with everything. And here's a couple of other things. Here's my uh, Sony tape deck, which uh, was actually originally purchased by my dad. Still works pretty good, but I had to change the belts on it, and even with new belts, it uh, has a little bit of a few little problems, but it works for the most part. And then here's one that I acquired recently. Sony 5-disc changer from 96. In fact, I think both of these are circa 96. And, uh, yeah, this one works pretty good, but I had to do some repairs on it. Um, and it still has problems with the drawer opening and closing. You gotta help it or otherwise it won't close quickly and then the CDs get stuck. So that's not good. And for the $12 I paid for it off of the bay, I'm very happy with it. I just love that, uh, those kerchunking sounds that mid-90s CD changers make. Don't you? Huh, then over here we have the video area. This is a 27 inch Trinitron. And 
It's actually something that was left behind by the previous owner of the house. You know, he was looking to get rid of whatever he could, and he took me around and said, Hey, you want anything? And I said, I'll take that. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's not perfect. It has some issues with geometry on the screen. I did take it apart the other night very carefully with really thick gloves, and I attempted to adjust convergence with it on which is kind of scary, but I did it, and I didn't get shocked. And I messed with that thing for probably 30 to 45 minutes, just trying to tweak those little magnetic adjusters. You know, just like they tell you, you know, several people on YouTube have videos, and no matter how much I adjusted it, I couldn't get it just perfect. You know, I got most of it corrected, like these areas in the center. So. It's mostly good, but that corner up there is just a little off, so you can see color bleeding in this area. And then down here, if you're watching a widescreen movie, you'll see uh, it, the black line just kind of droop a little bit on this side. Uh, despite all of my tinkering, I couldn't get it perfect. But it's not bad for a free TV, I'll say that. And especially a free TV that you don't have to ship or pick up or move. It's just comes with the house. So <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy watching movies back here. I do that a lot. This is also another piece that the previous owner left. It looks grungy, but it's actually really comfortable. And I love it. Uh, it's a lazy boy. It's a real grandpa chair. And it's perfect for sitting back here. And watching movies, a lot of laser discs. Uh, the the dresser was also left, which that thing's huge. I'm glad I didn't have to move that. And then up here, you'll see uh, got my vintage light bulb. I built that from parts you can buy at Lowe's, along with some retro speakers I got from the thrift store. Um, they're not hooked up to anything. Of course, the realistics on the bottom sound like crap, but I got them for how beautiful they look. And then the Sanyos up top sound more like regular speakers. Uh, they don't have tweeters or anything. They're just single driver. I might do something with them in the future. You know, replace the driver, add a tweeter, crossover, and then they might... Just replace the Dayton's over here, which are just kind of serviceable. Uh, they're okay. Um, I'm looking forward to having something better, though, in the future. And, of course, down here, you can see I've got the wonderful LaserDisc player that... Uh, People like to make fun of the Sony MDP-333, the entry-level option from Sony when it comes to laser discs. But uh, this is perfect for having a, a simple setup in the bedroom. It works well enough. And stay tuned because soon there will be a new laser disc player in the theater. And dare I say, it's a pioneer. So I can't wait for that to arrive, and I can show that to you. And there's my uh, DVD recorder, which is also which is acting as sort of a hub for things to come in, uh, video sources, and wood grain PS3, which I I didn't have it back here at first. Wanted to keep things more vintage, but then I decided, well. It's wood grain, so it fits in perfectly. It might as well be back here for some occasional CRT gaming or or just putting PlayStation View up and watching a basketball game or something. And down here you'll find my Raspberry Pi, which uh, I haven't gotten around to putting into a case yet, but um, I figure it's kind of protected already in this cabinet, so it's not too big of a hurry. I also added a um, Hi-Fi Berry board to it. 
because I wanted to be able to stream music from my Plex server in super high qualities like 192K. And it does a wonderful job once you get it going. And if you look over here, we have the um, shelf with all sorts of media on it, along with some retro games. So I'll take you through that real quick. On the bottom we have mostly Xbox and PS2 era and GameCube games along there. And up here we have the NES and Sega, which the Sega is my original one. And the NES is one I found at a thrift store about 10 years ago for 10 bucks, and I jumped on it. Ironically, same thrift store I got the DVD player for $6 from. So that's a good place to find things. Also found my copy of Mortal Kombat there. I remember, and, and when I bought it, the, the elderly lady behind the desk said, Oh, if I had known that we had this, I wouldn't have sold it to you. And I'm like, okay, that's great. Give me the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, and... So let's see, the the NES I did buy later, but I do have our original family NES, which is currently in a packed away in the closet. So I do have the the original family one. I just figured I'd use that one. And SVHS VCR comes in very handy for getting those uh high uh those S video signals out of the PS2, the Xbox, and the GameCube. That's my wife's, by the way. One she had when she was younger. And this is another thrift store find, which is a great little TV. And the reason I set it up here is because why not? You can't have enough TVs. So pretty much you can run games through the VCR to the TV, but they also go to this TV and the stereo. So you can rock um, two players, two TVs, which my wife and niece did just a couple weeks ago. That was pretty cool. Worked out well. And then over here we got the laser discs. That's my whole collection right there. I'm sure it'll grow more though. I just got Top Gun in the mail today though. That is the uh, very nice AC3 THX version which I'm saving for the new player when it comes. And I want to do a full collection video on my LaserDisc soon. But, uh, you know, sit down and show you each and every one that I have. Talk about them a little bit. And just some random stuff. Another thrift store find. Just an old radio. But it works. Totally works. Um, my one and only... Box PC game. Records! All my records. Maybe that'll be another collection video. In here I do have the Top Gun soundtrack, which was a thrift store find for 50 cents, and it was in such good condition that it probably would have sold for like 15 or 20 bucks on eBay. Like mint condition in a thrift store. I couldn't believe it. I like finding deals like that, but they're rare. They don't happen often. Here's my CD rack. And VHSs. I forgive the the cars laying around on the on the shelf. I, I have to figure out where I, where I want to put those. But yeah, I've got some VHSs, the uh Terminator 2 special edition. Along with some cool VHSs. And Dragon Ball Z's. And you might have noticed all my posters are back up on the wall after moving. Most of them are anyway. Oh yeah, and this is the DVD shelf. I haven't talked about that yet. We just built these shelves ourselves, so we put the, the racks up on the wall and we cut the boards and painted them. It was a project my wife and I undertook. Turned out really well. I like it. It's perfect for DVDs. 
And so pretty much I have it laid out like animation on the top. Uh, horror and comedies on the next shelf, which I figure horror and comedy go hand in hand. And then this is all the action. And then uh, pretty much just anything else down at the bottom. A lot of Star Trek and Star Wars. And over here we got manga. That's all the stuff that I collected when I was a teenager. Haven't really bought manga since then though. But it's a pretty cool collection. And uh, over here I just got this going. This is my old 386 computer. Which was given to me way back when, about 15 years ago. And uh, I recently just wiped it and put Windows 3.1 on it because I had Windows 95 on it when I was actually using it as an active computer and it worked well enough. But, you know, setting it up in the vintage room, I wanted to get it back to its roots. Yeah, I could probably make a whole video just on that and playing games on it and everything. It's a 3D6 AMD processor with 8 meg of RAM and a 400 megabyte hard drive. Um, CD-ROM. I just put a Creative Labs Sound Blaster in it. Sounds real good. I call it Old Yeller. And this is my SyncMaster 19 inch monitor. Works very well with it and complete with the THX LaserDisc approval, which is very important for your, your Windows 3.1 DOS gaming. And a nice clicky keyboard. And one more note, the lamp, another uh, nice, nice gift from the previous owner. It just fits with the room so well and all my weird remotes and whatnot. And I got the nice polar bear blanket up on the wall, which I pretty much just put there for sound absorption. And I also put some, some foam back there to help. Because this is where I wanted to do voicing for both work and my own stuff. And, uh, it, you know, everything's so echoey with the uh, hardwood floors that I had to do something. So between the rug and the polar bears, it works pretty nicely. Well, anyway, I think I've gone pretty long on this video because there was so much to talk about, and there's still so much to talk about. I have to make more videos so that I can uh, really delve in deeply and talk about details on things, because I like, what can I say, I like talking about details when it comes to electronics and media. That's my thing, and I'll keep doing it, so I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll catch you next time.